shit that rubbish. Wait right till he gets home. I'll smash his head in. I'll stuff that brush right. Help! Help! Let me out! Help! 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 <laughs> He won't be home till six. <laughs> oh, what a way to spend an afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and you're in a general meeting. Keen guest and Nettlefold, chairman's report. Vicar denies trysts with au pair girl in caravan. I was teaching her English, he said. <laughs> the prosecution alleged that he met her nightly and that on three separate occasions he... One across semi-precious stone. Uh, two down South American River. Nine across. Oh. <coughs> that, that, come on, of course you won't go. That, that, where are you? That. I see what I've got on the clock. It's worth a lot of money. Money? Money? Money, 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 money. Oh, blimey, he must be dead. Dad? Where are you? Dad? He's gone down a boozer again. I'll kill him. <laughs> for five minutes, can you? <laughs> What's a delightful picture to come home to? <laughs> oh, would that I could do him in oils. <laughs> what majesty. King Albert the First, sitting on the throne room in Steptoe Castle. <laughs> Come and see him in all his decaying splendour. Half a crown. Children not allowed. <laughs> been trapped in there. I told you to shift all that rubbish. I went in there to clean it up, to close the door, and start a landslide. But it's your own fault. I've told you a billion times, you don't stack it properly. Yeah. That's what you're here for. You stacks it up, I brings it home. Next time, leave the door open. <laughs> oh, charming. Well, you got no tea, so laugh that all. No, I'm not bothered. Why, well, you've been sitting in there all day, scratching yourself. I've been out earning us a bit of money. How? What is it? Oh, it had to happen one day. I mean, I don't go around with my eyes shut, you know. It's very nice to know that out there in that vast, stinking metropolis, there are still things of beauty. On the car. Yeah. Is that it in that box? Get away! Get some bony little chicken claws off of that. <laughs> oh, look at them shaking there. I've only got to mention money and you lose his control of all your muscles. <laughs> Come on, come on, what is it? Show us, show us! Like a little Yorkshire Terrier, would you stand back? 
this is very fragile. The mine out! Will you get from under my heels? If you trips me up, you wish you'd stayed in a Kazi. <laughs> you stay there. I'll call you when I'm ready. Open the door. I'll stand back. You can't come in now. Leave it alone. Go sit down. Go on. Sit. 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 Good boy. <laughs> now. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Don't touch it. <laughs> All my life, I've dreamed of finding a piece like this. Look at it. Not a mark on it. It's like the day it was fired. You're looking at perfection, Dad. Yeah, it's not a bad piece of china, is it? China? China? Porcelain, if you don't mind. China, Gordon Bennett, you do appall me at times, Peter. <laughs> don't you realise what this is? I don't suppose it's much. Oh, of course. As a lifelong collector of objets darts, to it, this Wallace collection all around us. Give us your considered opinion. Please astound us with a display of your erudition on the subject. Now, come on, don't be shy. Don't be saucy. I've got collected some good bits in me time. Oh, I know, I know. Those is yours, aren't they? <laughs> a lifetime of ceaseless searching went into those, didn't it? His agents scouring the world for choice pieces to delight the discerning eye. <gasps> That cowly astute figure seen so often in the leading auction rooms of the world, bidding by early bird. And at last, on shout of the public, four cracked willow pattern frats from the crockery department itself. They're Chinese, they are. Oh, yes. Bert Harris Dynasty, 1927. Look, mate, the nearest they have been to China is when I had that tin of chop suey off of them last week. You haven't been eating off my plates. Yes. I must confess, I did. Last Wednesday night, when you went ten-pin bowling, I took the liberty. And to illuminate the splendour of the scene, I stuck a couple of candles in that beautiful English 18th century candelabra of yours. I had a slight accident, I'm afraid to say. I Owing to the heat of the candles, some of the solid silver peeled off. What? <laughs> Don't worry, you can always get them re-crowned. You ruined it! I'll save some more stamps and get yourself another one. Now, come on, do you want to look at this piece or not? It's the one genuine piece in the house. We'll see. swords on the back. Yeah, that don't mean nothing. Everybody forwards them. I never go by the mark. Good bison's valuable. I need something more than them cross swords to go on. Yeah, nice colour. Good glazing. Any history? I don't know. Where'd you get it? On the round. Oh, I know, you got it on the round, but whereabouts? Oh, that's it, you see. It's very interesting. Do you know Osborne Drive and Willoughby Street? Good area. Yeah, it was. It's gone off a bit since your day. It's all a bit Z cars around there now. <laughs> anyway, I'm chantering down Osborne Drive, and this door opens, and there's this old bird standing there. I'm not kidding, she must have been about 109. It's orange-haired, great big hooter and slacks. <laughs> 
they was revolting. If I'd have had a bad day, I would have driven straight past. Anyway, she says to me, young man, I think I've got something that might interest you. I thought, you're joking. <laughs> anyway, I went in. Oh dear, oh dear. 45 cats and not a window open. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, it made this place smell like Beverly Nichols' bathroom. <laughs> I, I, I can't describe it. I, I thought, if she's got a couple of goyers in here for two quid a piece, I can't stand it. Anyway, she must have seen me reeling because she starts rabbiting on about the good old days and how things ain't what they used to be and how difficult it is to get servants. I thought, I'm not surprised. <laughs> it's a wonder you got any neighbours. <laughs> I'm going green, you know. Anyway, she, she, she gets down to it. She's short of money, and would I like to buy something off of her? Well, I think anything to get out. So she brings this out. Get away. Yeah, she, she says, would I like to give her ten shillings for it, for some cat's meat? I thought, poor old dear, she doesn't know. Anyway, I couldn't, Dad. So I'll give her a fistful. Five quid! Oh, well, I had to. I couldn't take it off her for half a bar. No, no, that would be like stealing. No. Yeah. Not an old girl like that. It could have been my mother. Not with orange hair and a big hooter, it couldn't. <laughs> Where did she get it? I don't know. I, mean, I couldn't stand it. I'd just give her the money and run. My eyes is still watering. <laughs> you know. It's a nice piece. I'll give you that. Soon find out if it's genuine. Take it down to Harry Wincup. Harry Wincup? You're joking. If you was to take the crown jewels into him, you'd have a job to get him up to 30, Bob. <laughs> This is way outside his class, this sort of gear. Now, I'm taking this straight up the West End. That's where you get the real prices. What was the name of that shop you took that other great find of yours to? Yeah, shut up. Christopher Columbus's logbook in his own handwriting. There's no need to bring that up. Oh, that would have been worth a few quid. If it hadn't have been written in English. You didn't know your Spanish either. Oh, come on, I'm having a go. Uh, that's the sort of place I ought to take this. I'd like him to have a look at my mycin. Here, hang on. I think he's got his record here somewhere. I've got a feeling this time, Dad. This is right. It must be. <laughs> Behave yourself. Keep your hands in your pockets. No nicking anything. What do you mean? You know very well what I mean. You're getting very tarry fingered in your old age. People is beginning to notice. Stepped over, clept over, calling you down the <laughs> Oh, that's nice, calling her old dad a tea leaf. Look, kleptomania is not tea leafing. It is an illness. You're just a bit mental, that's all. I've got a good conduct medal, that's more than you've got. Yeah, well, just keep your hands in your pockets, just the same. And mind how you walk about. You break anything in here, we'll have to go bankrupt, all right? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you'll have to go round the back. You can't bring the dustbin through here. <laughs> I beg your pardon. We are not dustmen, my good fellow. We are rag and bone men. And we've come to do business with you. Well, I can't conceive what kind of business we'd have to conduct. We deal in antiques. So do we when we can get them. We've got gas stoves in our yard. It's all right, <laughs> But 
it just so happens that my partner and I have recently come into possession of a piece of porcelain of quite outstanding beauty and quality. After browsing through country life, we thought it might be of considerable interest to you, so we have brung it along in order <laughs> that you may purport to have a butcher's at it. <laughs> so I see. May I look at it then? By all means. Thank you. Thank you. prices up here. They're all bleeding foreigners anyway. Once you get past Hammersmith, you have had it. There's not an Englishman in sight except the poor devils that work for them. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> go anywhere in London and ask your way today. They wonder what you're talking about. Me no speaking to English. But me you walk. shut up, Harry Roberts. <laughs> Where do you think that that banana and that orange come from? And this bit of stuff we're hoping to flog. That's foreign, isn't it? Really, this xenophobic fixation of his, honestly. <laughs> it's a criminal offence nowadays to preach race hatred, so you watch out or I'll inform on you. I'm entitled not to like who I like, and I don't like... Well, that's I'm, 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 I'm a very busy man. Are you, are you still interested in showing me your piece? Oh, yes, I, I do beg your pardon, please. I, I'll try to forgive me. I, I do apologise. It's just that I always rise to the bait. I can't help it. I, I, sh I should ignore him. I should name but I can't help it. Gets right on my bristols, he does. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who I say? Yes. Yes. It, it's my son. It's got the cross swords on the back. Yes, well, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. You see, I told you. Oh, you aggravating little bleeder. You're like an <laughs> excellent... Interesting, Ray. Very interesting indeed, Riley. Yes. Where, where, where did you get this from? What's that got to do with you? Will you be quiet? <laughs> Why do you ask? Well, it's a very rare, interesting piece of mice and porcelain, probably made round about 1740, and I would think most likely the work of Johann Jerkin Candler, the <laughs> master model of that period. Yes, that's what we're for. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, before we can negotiate a price, I, I would have to be sure that you came by the piece legitimately. He thinks he nicked it. Slot him one. No, no, really, I promise. Catch his face no, no, I promise. Kick him in the... <laughs> God, <laughs> little... Will you shut up for a moment? He has every right to inquire. There, nah, you're too soft, that's your trouble. If that had happened to me in my day, it would have invited to kick up the Khyber at least. <laughs> the trouble with this country today. Nobody takes offence no more. In my day, an Englishman's word was his bond. I'm having nothing more to do with it. Good. Keep out of it, then. How much is it worth? Will you keep out of it? I can assure you we do have legitimate title to the piece. It was purchased during the normal course of trading from an old bird in Notting Hill Gate. <laughs> I can furnish you with further particulars if you so wish. Oh, good. Well, I think I can accept that. Well, on that basis, I'm prepared to offer you, oh, 200 pounds. 200 pounds? For that? Well, it's a fair price. 200 pounds? Oh, well, I suppose I could stretch it a bit. All right, then, 250. 250? Well, I'm sorry, I can't do any better than that. I've got to add on my profit. No, no, I'm sorry, 250. We'll take it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I must consult with my partner before accepting. Would you excuse us for a moment? <laughs> we'll take it, we'll take it. <laughs> if he gives 250 pounds, how much do you think it's worth on the open market? These blokes always works on 100% markup. He gives 250, must be worth four and a 500. If you can get it, if you can get it, Harold, let's take the money. We only paid a fiver for a jump, let's be greedy, let's take it. No, 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 it's we worth... We take it, we take it! That's my piece. I found it. I says we put it up for auction. Greed, that's what it is. Greed, Harold. It's eating into you, it's gnawing into you. <laughs> Sell it while it's still in one piece. The longer we have it, the more likely it is to get broken. No. 
We're getting 5,000% profit. I want 10,000% profit. <laughs> Thank you very much for your very generous offer. But on further reflection, my partner and I have decided not to sell as of this moment. Well, that's your prerogative, sir, but I don't think you'll get a better prize. Oh, if that is so, we may decide to keep it in our collection. Coming, Peter. Good afternoon, gentlemen. <laughs> Six thousand nine hundred. Can I have a round seven? Can I have a round seven? Six thousand nine. Seven thousand. Thank you, sir. Seven thousand. I bid for lot six nine four. Now oh, come along, gentlemen. You can't let him get away with this. It's giving it away. Come along. Seven thousand. Seven two. Seven two. Seven five. Seven seven fifty. Seven seven fifty. Do I hear any more? Eight thousand. Thank you, sir. Eight thousand guineas. I'm offered for these three teaspoons. <laughs> eight thousand guineas once. Eight thousand guineas twice. At eight thousand, then, Kellams. Did you find it all right then? Yeah. What's been happening? I was very excited. That bloke there just bought the last lot for eight thousand guineas. Did he really? What was it? Three teaspoons. Eight thousand quid and never had anything like it. He must be off his chump. I could have let him have a, a canteen for three quid, including the fish knives. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Now, this is us. We're on next. We will now continue the auction of the lot number 695, A Mice and Group of Lovers by J.J. Kendler, made in 1743. The shepherd, in a green jacket and turquoise breeches, is seated. His lover, who carries a basket of fruit, is offering him a cherry. She wears a mauve jacket and green dress. Between them is a very finely observed figure of a sheep. The whole is mounted on a flower-encrusted oval base. It's a very fine piece indeed. Now, watch very carefully to see who's doing the bidding. They hardly move. You have to watch them like hawks. Now, who'll start me off with 150 guineas? 150, thank you, sir. 150. 160. 170. 180. 190. 200. 210. 220. Can I have 230? 230, thank you, sir. 230, 240. 250. On my left, 250. Can I have 260? 260. Now, come along, gentlemen. In Rodding, give me 260 for this exceptionally fine piece. Hey, how about you? Go on, have a look. Go well with the spoons. I don't collect china. Cheaper than spoons. 250. You're looking marvellous on your mantelpiece, that would. On my left, 250. Look, will you keep quiet? Well, no, but he's bidding. I told you you should have taken that off. You won't get any more for it here. Oh, yes, I will. Gentlemen, please, can I have 260? 260, anybody? 260 in the back, thank you, What's sir. What you doing? Bidding for your own stuff. Shut up. I'm trying to get the price up. 270 over here. See? 280, sir. 280 it is. <laughs> Any advance on 280? 290. <laughs> 300. <laughs> 310. <laughs> 320. Any advance on 320? 320 at the back of the room. Down to you, you great burk. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you go over the other side, jolly much over there. I'll keep the price coming up from back here. Go, go, go. 320 it is. Can I have 330, sir? 330, thank you, sir. 340. <laughs> 350. 400. 450. 500. Go on, it's your turn. Hmm? No, I don't want it. You can have it. No, 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 look, I'll, I'll be sure. You can have it 450. No, I've changed my mind. I'll wait for another one to come up. It's with you for 450, sir. Hang on a minute. No, no look, it's, it's a very lovely piece. Well, buy it then. You ought to be glad I've dropped out. Oh, well, uh, see, I mean, I mean I, I'm not bothered either way. It was a mere whim on my part. I'm more of a bracket clock man myself. I, I, I can see you're very definitely a porcelain man. Have you had a close look at it? Oh, it's very beautiful. I don't want it. It's 500, 500 at the back, 500 once. Oh, God. 500 twice, 500, 550, thank you, sir. 550 on my left. Can I have six anywhere? 600, sir? Is it? No, no, no. Then it's 500 once, 550 twice. Sold for 550 guineas.
You twit. <laughs> you stupid, dirty, toothless, brightless old twit. <laughs> what did you walk on bid 550 guineas for? I could have bought it for 500. I didn't know it was you still bidding. I was trying to keep it going. Now, that's your trap, but you've been going too long. Why don't you... Go on. Say it. I'm nothing. Die. That's what you were going to say, isn't it? Why don't you die? No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. Oh. You can't wait to hear the first shovel full of dirt hit the coffin, <laughs> can you? Oh, I won't be mourned, I know that. You'll be dancing on me grave. Well, let me tell you, it'll be a relief to get out of this hellhole. You die? Oh, that made me laugh. You'll get your telegram from the Queen yet. Don't you worry. <laughs> I don't know what you're grumbling about. You've still got it, ain't you? We only bid for the thing against ourselves. We ain't lost nothing. And what about a 12.5% commission? I had to pay £68.15 for the sheer privilege of bringing it back home again. That's your own fault. You greedy little toe rag. You should have taken what the man in the shop offered and been satisfied. <laughs> don't you talk to me. Just don't talk to me ever again. I'm going to bed. Good night. Oh, no. Please, don't let it be that. Please, let it be one of his plights. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harold. It wasn't my fault. I dropped it. It's the only piece I ever had. Got a bit dirty, small handling has been having. I, I thought I'd wash it for you and it slipped through my fingers. It's me arthritis and me knuckles. <laughs> I can't hold things like I used to be able to. And I. Hang on. I've lost your temper. Oh, I'll get some glue and stick it together. We might still get a few bob for it. Hang on. Oh. 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 Oh